Autoimmunity is such an important point that I always try and find ways to describe it, to help people to understand what it's about. And in that image at the start, and I'll show you here again, uh, it shows someone scratch marks, bleeding, and it's almost a form of self-harm from the immune system. The immune system is therefore targeting your natural or your normal proteins, normal cells, and therefore causing damage. It's a serious problem and one that we're going to have to face the consequences of over quite a number of decades. And I'll come to why I say that. But today I'm going to use the skin as an analogy as well to explain that concept of a hyperimmune response and something that comes not just from infection, but also elephant stimulation. So let's make a few points before we start. Um, just to remind you all that in the description below, we have the Spike Detox course. It's been discounted and it has everything about highlighting why <clears throat> the spike protein is such a critical part of the problem and my approach or my thoughts about it. One of the really interesting parts are the question and answers, really valuable information that was shared there. Additionally, coming up in another few days or in another week or so is the outbreak of a disease X, as I call it, almost the neurological COVID storm in India with Guillain-Barre syndrome, an unusual presentation at the moment that I'm going to try and see if I can correlate to what is happening in terms of COVID circulation. But let's get back to where we are. If you've just joined, I'm talking about the fact that autoimmunity is a critical point, damages our cells and makes us or the immune system target us in some way, which causes quite a lot of problems. So a few thoughts for you to get in terms of why I think this is so important. The first thing is that the immune system needs to be in balance. And this is what it would look like. If there is inflammation on one side, on the left, you have the inflammation, on the right, you have the suppression. And both of these work together to try and keep the immune system in balance. Anything that is, if this is not enough and there's too much suppression, you don't get healing. If this is too much, then you get inflammation. And this balance is really the critical thing that I'm emphasizing now in that it's not just about the fact that you have say a strong immune system because an overly strong immune system is autoimmunity, hyperimmunity. And what we seem to be finding is that the immune system is like um, triggered by this spike protein, which is like a Velcro ball, a, a Velcro a grabber with the tennis ball stuck onto it. And this characteristic of the spike protein is really one of the main reasons why the immune system overreacts when it gets exposed to it. And you can see here when I show you the spike protein with all these other proteins attached to it, this, if it gets picked up by the immune system, can trigger autoimmune responses because the immune system sometimes can't differentiate the spike protein from some of these other normal proteins that could bind to it. So this is pretty important for us to try and see if we can address. And in order to let you grasp this concept, I've brought up an idea with regards to the skin. You can tell me if this works afterwards. Let me know what you think. So I'm going to show you essentially what it looks like in terms of the skin healing process. If you imagine there was an injury, this is a cut, there's some bleeding from the blood vessels and the blood then clots. And this is why the blood has all the clotting factors in it. It then clots and then it makes a scab. And this is part two. So there's inflammation here around the cot and that's because it's trying to heal it. And as the inflammation continues, there you have proliferation. Then these fibroblasts come in and they remake new tissue and they lay down collagen. And you see gradually the scab is falling away until it's completely gone and then the skin starts to remodel. And that's the process of how the skin heals. And it's perfect in the sense that you get a nice 
clean area. And sometimes in some people, you don't even see where they had the wound in the first place. Now, to help you to understand this hyperimmune response now, you then have to think about that same process, but look at it again. This time, it's a keloid scar. This is someone's shoulder. This is a scar. They may have had an injury or surgery. And this is what happens to the skin. And it's technically excessive scar growth, which extends beyond the original wound because of deposition of collagen. Um, it can be triggered from cuts, burns, piercings, multiple things. And there are certain people who are at higher risk for it. And this keloid scar then can become an issue. And then people sometimes may have to have further procedures to try and remove the keloid, mainly for aesthetic points of view. But the point is, is that it's important to note that the keloid in and of itself is a hyperimmune response to injury. And the way that I've used the analogies that I've taken the concept of Goldilocks. And if you haven't heard of Goldilocks, you have to read the story. But essentially, Goldilocks was wandering in the forest and came to a house where the three bears were out. They had father bear, mother bear, and baby bear, and they all had their porridge. And Goldilocks was busy tasting all of the porridges to try and work out which one she liked. And if you remember that story, you can see here that in this one, Goldilocks thought it was too cold. In this one over here, it was too hot. But in the middle, it was not too hot, not too cold. It was just right. That's how your immune system works. And that's a really important point, is that it needs to be just right. A hyper immune response is too hot. Too low a response, it's too cold. But it has to be perfect or just right. And that's the way that you look at the immune system. Because in terms of skin healing, if the immune system and the inflammatory response is too high, then you get what appears as a keloid. You can see here the breakdown of the skin and underneath the skin, this area is hyperactive. There's more collagen, more fibroblasts, and therefore it ends up with the skin protruding. So it's not nice and smooth. And this characteristic is a hyperimmune response. So as everything in terms of the body, it's about balance. That's what you want to get. If you get balance, you get health. And this is where I'm making the point in the context as to what happens with regards to ongoing exposure of spike protein. Now, some people may argue, why do I say spike protein? Well, I say spike protein because we know that these kinds of immune responses occur after one infection. And you can see here, this is high risk of autoimmune disease after COVID-19. And this was a very important paper looking at the triggering of autoimmune conditions after the viral infection. However, why I say it's spike protein is because balanced with the viral exposure is another paper looking at the production of autoantibodies in healthcare workers after mRNA vaccines. And so what is common between the infection and the vaccine is spike protein. So it makes logical sense that the spike protein is the driver in terms of these abnormal immune responses. And that leads me into the principle of the COVID storm. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What happens when you have immune priming and recurring infection? Does that drive a hyperimmune response? Does it set the immune system to respond in a different way, not just on exposure to COVID, but to any other thing? These are the kinds of questions that we need to try and understand over the next few years. It's very important in the context of where we are now. Everything is about balance. If we can achieve balance in the immune system, and this is why I said that it's so important to understand what is going on, and I highlight again the principle of that if the spike protein is driving immune responses, we need to figure out ways to get rid of it.
That's the fundamental principle that we have to try and find. There's still a long way to go, and there's still many questions that need to be answered. But at the end of the day, hopefully, the scientific community will no longer be afraid of asking hard questions. Let's see if we can find answers to protect you and your loved ones. Have a great evening.